Caleb, I want to break down the situation if you're a landlord and you've got a tenant that's either voluntarily moved out or they abandoned the property or you went through the court eviction process. Either way, they're now out of your piece of rental property. I want to talk about personal property that they've left behind, okay? You've changed the locks. You're the landlord. You've got possession of the house again. They left a couch or the chairs or a TV or whatever. So let's break it down in simple terms for landlords. What is their obligation with this personal property that's been left behind by the tenant? Right, Tom. Well, this is important. I've had my landlords get sued by prior tenants over some personal property that was tossed. And so to cover all your bases and make sure you're safe, you're going to want to comply with Florida Statute Chapter 715. And in there, it deals with the disposal of personal property of a tenant that has left or that tenancy has been terminated. And so what you have to do is you have to do this notice. It's a written notice. You have to give it to their forwarding address or to the address of the property if you don't have a forwarding address. And it needs to state it's pursuant to 715 Florida statutes. It needs to specifically list all of the personal property that that tenant has left behind. It must give them a time frame of 10 days to come pick it up. And you have to make it reasonably available to the tenant to come pick up. And it has to either say that the property will be disposed of or any items over $500 individually will be sold at auction, the money will be deposited with the county, and then the tenant will actually have a year from the date of that to come to the county and pick up that money. So I'm sure, first of all, does that letter have to be by certified mail or just regular mail? It doesn't. It doesn't have to be certified. So I'm sure there's some landlords out there saying, hey, you know, that happened to me one time. I had no idea where the tenant went to. How am I supposed to know where the tenant's gone to? They hopped in their car and they left. Well, you just answered it for us. Right, yeah. Last known address. If you if you can't find anything, um, what you do is you send it first class mail, Tom. And so if there's a forwarding address with the post office, the post office will take care of that for you. If there's not, you did everything you could do, and the court's going to understand that. And some people may be out there wondering out there, well, how do you pr- if you're a landlord, how do you prove that you mail this to your tenant? And I, I think the court's just going to assume that if you've got a letter dated October 6th that you really mailed it on that day, they're not going to question this. That's right, Tom. Challenge it. Okay. So then we're talking about values, and it makes a difference whether the value is under or over $500. That's not for everything. That's for just particular items, whether it's a pair of pants or a chair. That's right, Tom. Individual items. And so then let's, and by the way, when we're talking about putting values on these things, we're putting garage sale values on these things. The statute specifically says that the landlord reasonably believes is over 500. So you're right, Tom. It's, it's what a reasonable person is going to assume. So if a landlord was giving notice to this tenant that things have been left behind, he could probably make some broad statements like a bunch of clothes or a bunch of pots and pans and dishes right he doesn't have to individually go in there and list every pant every shirt and things like that you can lump certain items together just try to be generally specific enough so the tenant knows exactly what's there okay so we're we're going to assume these pots and pans and clothes are not worth more than five hundred dollars and as that part of notice says hey if you don't come get them and within 10 days i can throw them away or i can keep them or i can give them the goodwill right exactly But then specifically, this notice is going to list items that might be worth more than $500. Hey, maybe that's a nice 65-inch TV. Maybe it's a PC computer. Right. And so there you're going to identify it by specific about what it is. You don't have to put a value on it. You're just saying, I think it's worth more than $500. Right, Tom. That's all you have to do. And so let's just say that there was a TV that was left behind that the landlord truly feels is worth more than $500. Ten days goes by. Now what is the landlord going to do with that? You have to auction it off, Tom. So you come on to contact the county. You're going to set up an auction. Um, you know, it's going to be sold. The county will take the proceeds of that after paying you and the auction expenses, and they'll hold it for a year. The tenant can does have a year to come back and get that money. If they didn't pick it up, oftentimes they're not going to come back and get the money. And at that point, then the county is going to determine it's theirs. If you hired a lawyer to handle this whole auction process for you, would they reimburse? I know they're going to reimburse the court costs and filing fees and publication fees. Are they going to reimburse the lawyer for that, too? They should, Tom. Okay. And just personal experience, any landlords having to do this type of thing where the tenant has moved out, but they've left stuff behind? Do I have personal experience? Oh, yeah, I do. 
And One minute. It, okay, so I find that really fascinating. Again, if you want to reach attorney Kayla Maggio and talk to him about your landlord-tenant situation, he's available here at the Olson Law Group anytime at 407 423 